Hello and welcome to Brawl News. The Brawl authorities are still perplexed at Sui McBeaker's recent disappearance. And they always will be. In other news, we've recently had a spike in brawler suicides due to a rumor spreading around that if you can touch the enemy Ike, you will be rewarded with millions of gems. Jerry, are you really telling me that today's Brawl Olympics event was the actual reason for all of those deaths? Well then, tell your kids to close your eyes as we turn some time over to our chief brawlnalist, Kairos time for today's Brawl Olympics event. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time and it is time to brawl. Today we're going to be doing another Brawl Stars Olympics event, that's right. The Brawl Olympics! Now for today's event, we're going to take a look and see how much damage every single brawler can do to the enemy Ike with one attempt. Now every brawler gets to use their super once, they cannot use the help of another player, whether that is a friendly player or an enemy player. And brawlers that can safely damage the Ike from a distance will actually not be considered a diver and instead they will be considered a long distance damage dealer to the Ike and will be participating in a separate event based off of how quickly they can take the Ike down by themselves. Make sure you comment which three brawlers you think are going to be the best divers. And for bonus internet cookie points, you can also guess the best three for attacking the Ike from a distance. Starting off, we got Shelly, 17th for the diver competition. She rushes in first and uses her super at max range. Then she's able to quickly fire off a couple of shots before getting taken out. She ends up dealing a total of 2,576 damage or 7% to the enemy Ike. In 16th place, we've got Terra. Ultimately, using her shadow to tank a couple of hits was more effective than dropping her super onto the Ike for additional damage. Total, she was able to deal 2,660 damage, which is also 7%. In 15th place, we have Poco. Now in this replay, Poco uses his heal a little bit too late, which actually prevents him from landing his third attack onto the Ike. An additional attack was actually added to the total, uh, bringing Poco up to 2,772 damage, or 7%. Coming in 14th place for the diver competition is Mortis. He uses his first attack in order to dodge an attack from the Ike, and then he uses his super to heal up a bit of damage along his way, and then he is able to do two quick swipes of damage to the Ike before dying. This is a total of 3,780 damage or 10% to the enemy Ike. Bo is 13th. He does not get to use his bombs because he does not get the help of any enemy brawlers. He is able to land two complete hits onto the Ike, dealing 4,200 damage or 11%. And don't think I forgot about Carl, guys. Carl gets 12th. He uses his super at the perfect time to dodge two Ike attacks, and then he is able to deal a bit of damage with his super, positions himself perfectly so that he can then quickly release two attacks using the wall to actually reload his attack faster, dealing a total of 4,704 damage, or 12%. Nita comes in 11th place where she throws out her bear to tank six Ike attacks. This allows her to get close to the Ike and deal five complete attacks, dealing 5,180 damage or 13%. Coming up, we have a two-way tie for ninth place, starting off with Colt who is able to actually safely super the Ike from a distance and then attack with one full attack before Ike actually takes him out. This deals a total of 6,720 damage or 17%. Frank is also tied for ninth place with Colt. He has enough HP to withstand eight Ike attacks before getting taken out. And in that time, he's able to use his super at the perfect range, which then freezes the Ike turret. And then Frank is able to release three full attacks before getting taken out himself. And in that time, he's able to deal 6,700 120 damage or 17%. Next up in eighth, we have Crow. Crow has very little HP, and th that means that he just is not able to survive against this turret very well. But if you auto aim his super at the perfect time, every one of his daggers from his super will land on the turret, and he's also able to quickly throw out one attack before getting taken out, including poison. Crow is able to deal a total of 7,056 damage, which is 18% to the Ike. Coming in seventh place, we have Leon. Leon uses his invisibility to actually get close up to the Ike, and then he's able to quickly throw out three full attacks the moment that he gets within range of where the Ike would actually be able to see him, and then he gets taken out, dealing a total of 7,240 damage, or 19%. Coming in sixth place is Pam. I actually had to test this one out a lot of times to figure out exactly what the best way to use her healing turret is, and the best is to throw out her healing turret to tank for Pam, as so that she can then get close enough to the Ike so that she can deal max damage to it. Doing this, she's able to deal 7,644 damage or 20%. Coming in fifth place, we have Jessie. 
she throws out her turret and then uses her star power to actually throw off three quick attacks that do heal the turret a, a little bit in comparison to the Ike's attacks and then deals damage to the Ike three times. Then she rushes in and is barely able to squeeze two attacks in. It looked like she may have been able to do a third but on closer inspection and on retrying it a few times the first attack was actually released as soon as possible so that would not have given her a third opportunity to throw out an attack. In total she deals 7,756 damage or 20% to the Ike by herself. In fourth place, we have Daryl. Daryl is able to roll in, dodging a few shots. His star power then helps keep him alive for plenty of time. It actually does not matter if he would have attacked as soon as possible because then he would not have been able to reload his fourth shot either way. And that means that some of his first attack actually would have missed. So the best thing is for Daryl to wait until he is right next to the Ike and then unload three complete attacks on it. This allows him to deal 9,036 damage or 20 three percent in this replay his first attack actually did not hit all shots so there is a chance that he could have dealt 400 more damage but still that places him in fourth place okay guys it is now time for the best three divers in siege if you guess them right you get some free internet cookie points this is me giving them to you congratulations you deserve it in third place we have barley Barley starts out with his super and he throws it out and is able to deal a complete super's worth of damage onto the Ike. He then runs in headfirst and is barely able to unload three attacks before getting taken out. In total, this brings him up to 9,520 damage on the enemy Ike, or 24%. Coming in second place, we have El Primo. El Primo is able to jump right onto the Ike, his star power then deals a little bit of damage to him and he's able to completely throw out four full attacks because he just has so much HP and he's able to withstand so many attacks from the Ike. In total, El Primo is able to deal 9,984 damage, which is a total of 25%. That's right guys, El Primo could successfully win a siege match by himself if he was able to successfully dive four times. But still. He does not quite hold a candle to our number one diver, and that is going to Bull. Bull charges in with his super and is able to deal a little bit of damage with his charge. He is then able to unload three attacks, plus his star power actually reloads his attack faster, so he's able to very narrowly throw in that fourth full attack, dealing a total of 12,320 damage with one dive, or 31%. That is unbelievable okay guys now we have the second competition for today's event and that is going to be the best long range attackers and how long it takes for them to each take out the enemy ike safe turret thing by themselves starting in seventh place we have gene now gene doesn't get any points for his super because his super does not deal any damage anymore he has an incredibly low damaging attack but it does happen to reach the ike now, I, there's a couple things here. You'll notice that it's bouncing back and forth between one flame's worth of damage and two flame's worth of damage. I tried very hard to consistently land two flames of damage onto the Ike, but I am convinced that it is not possible for you to do that consistently. In total, it took me 250 seconds to take out the Ike, and even if you were able to <laughs> do it sooner than that, he would still take last place. Uh, because his attack deals anywhere between uh, half of a percentage and one percentage, depending on how many flames he's able to attack on there, and that's, that just takes forever. I mean, in sixth place, we have Piper. Now, Piper does not safe, safely reach the Ike from her maximum range, but she can peek in, throw off an attack, and then fall back before getting taken out, and this does require her to actually take some time to actually heal up between attacks. It took me 161 seconds to finish off the Ike, minus some respawn time due to an accidental death. Yeah, that was my bad, Piper. Sorry about that. Someone might be able to actually do a little bit faster if they were super polished and only took two attacks from the turret at a time but uh, even then that wouldn't save you guys very much time. In fifth place is Dynamike. Now Dynamike is able to throw out his super and then fall back before getting taken out. His normal attack does not have the range to actually reach Ike safely, but if he throws out an attack and uses his star power to jump back to safe safety after he's thrown out an attack, he will actually be able to deal some damage to Ike without dying. Your aim 
and timing has to be perfect and it is really easy to screw up. Some people will actually be much better at doing this than I was. I was lucky enough to be, able to be able to do three perfect ones in a row. I then used that time that it took me for to do that and then calculated how long it would take for somebody that was an expert dynamite to be able to do this consistently every single time. Um, and that time came to 150 seconds. Honestly, it's gonna be much longer for that for most people. So dynamite may actually be deserving of sixth, sixth place. I'll let you guys decide whether dynamite or Piper should take fifth. But in fourth place, we have Spike. Spike is able to actually reach the Ike turret from a safe distance as long as Spike's attacks do hit at the right angle. Spike also gets to dive once to try and finish off the turret while, while using his super. As you can see, I did it a little bit too soon, but I added the times correctly to, and that took a total of 138 seconds to take out an Ike with Spike. Okay guys, we are down to the last three brawlers that have not been mentioned throughout this entire video. And these are the ones that are the best for taking out Ike from a distance. Once again, if you guys get this one right, you get bonus internet cookie points, so here you go. In third place, we have Rico. Rico gets to start off his assault with his super, bouncing off the wall for additional star power damage. After that, if you are standing in the perfect spot on the bot drop map and you aim your shots perfectly, Four of Rico's five shots will bounce off the box, increase in range, and will hit the enemy Ike, dealing 2,000 damage per attack. There is no way that I could pull this off consistently since it has to be absolutely perfect, but in case there is some insane Rico player out there that could do this, I calculated the time for Rico to take out the Ike turret, and that came to 74 seconds. Coming in second place, we have Penny. Now Penny's turret is has a super long range that can easily attack the Ike turret from a safe distance. On top of that, Penny does get one dive where she's able to go in and attack with three quick regular attacks onto the turret. And then once she respawns, she doesn't get to use her regular attacks after that. You can't, that would be against the rules for this event. But still, her turret is able to safely, slowly chip away at the Ike turret until it is taken out. In total, Penny is able to solo take out an enemy Ike in 55 seconds, less than a minute guys it only takes 55 seconds for penny to take out an enemy ike that's nuts and bolts but we still have that first place winner you guys may have guessed it that's going to brock brock starts off his attack with his super which lands two rockets on the turret if positioned perfectly in hindsight i realized that if brock dove in just a little bit he might have been able to get four rockets positioned perfectly but honestly he doesn't need it because he's going to be first anyway. Brock is able to outrange the enemy Ike with his regular attack, which means that he is able to deal full damage plus his star power damage to the Ike. In total, it only takes Brock a very short 43 seconds to take out an Ike completely by himself. And there you have it, guys. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this Brawl Olympics event and which Brawl Olympics event you want to see in the future. I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube members and my Patreon sponsors for helping support my channel in such a big way. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.